Brothers and sisters, President Nelson has asked that I handle the business of the Solemn Assembly for which we are gathered today. This is an occasion of great significance for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints throughout the world. Dating from October 10, 1880, when John Taylor was sustained to succeed Brigham Young as Prophet, Seer, and Revelator, and President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, each of these occasions has been designated as a formal, solemn assembly of the body of the Church to express the voice of the Church. We will vote by quorums and groups. Wherever you are, you are invited to stand only when requested and expressed by your uplifted hand that you choose to sustain those whose names will be presented. You should vote only when asked to stand. The general authorities assigned to the Tabernacle and the Assembly Hall on Temple Square will observe the voting in those facilities. In stake centers, a member of the stake presidency will observe the voting. If anyone casts a contrary vote, those individuals should contact their respective stake presidents. We will now proceed. Again, please stand and vote only when asked to do so. We ask members of the First Presidency to please arise. It is proposed that the First Presidency sustain Russell Marion Nelson as prophet, seer, and revelator, and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Those of the First Presidency in favor, please manifest it. This is not the Church of Joseph Smith. Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, let's see if we can get some videos out here. Uh, the succession crisis is uh, well known among apologists and uh, critics of the church. Uh, regular Mormons don't seem to know of it. And uh, it's based on the understanding that uh, Joseph Smith didn't leave any method of succession behind in any of the documents. And this is not correct. And so, uh, what the website on Wikipedia has, Succession Crisis for Latter-day Saints, is a <clears throat> an organized system of those who were theoretical successors, which Hiram, Samuel, William, children of Joseph Smith, Oliver Cowdery, David Widmer, not understanding what I'm going to be bringing up for you today. And then they have immediate successors. Uh, let's see if we can weed through them. <coughs> yeah, they don't have... <laughs> they don't have any actual listing it's just paragraphs that you got to read through but I see Sidney Rigdon Brigham Young and, and uh, Emma Smith uh, urging Marks William Marks uh, really <coughs> so yeah Council of 50, dear God. So many problems with that. That'll take me on a different path for this video. And so then there was, after Joseph Smith had died, there were those who uh, rose up to 
claim authority. And so you get, uh, uh, again, Brigham, Sidney, uh, James String, <clears throat> and, uh, well, uh, this needs to be reorganized, guys. <laughs> and so let's go over what Joseph Smith left. On March 28th, 1835, he gave section 107 as we now have it in our section. A, a revised Doctrine and Covenants would remove sections and put them all in uh, time order. That I, th I think would be best. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, <clears throat> it's not restored yet. And so we get Joseph Smith having newly licensed uh, the members of the 12 and of the 70 who were missionaries. And you need to understand how Joseph Smith organized his uh, quorums back then to understand this. And so he's not speaking to the high priest, he's not speaking to elders, and not even the Rionic priesthood. It's just the 12 and the 70 who were newly organized. And they've got licenses, and all this is on the Joseph Smith papers. This is how I know about it. And, <clears throat> and so talking with them, he gives verse 22. He says, after talking about how each quorum votes for their president, he then goes on to say, for the Melchizedek priesthood, three presiding high priests can serve more than one master, but Joseph Smith set up three presiding high priests chosen by the body, and they have to be unanimous in their decisions. And so Joseph Smith is clearly setting things up for when he's gone. And nobody did it, did they? Chosen by the body. This is where we get that Adam on Diamond priesthood meeting in the latter days where Jesus comes and gets the keys from of government of the United States from Lucifer. <laughs> the deep state Dems. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's supposed to have been for succession, not the latter days. And, and so it's the whole Melchizedek priesthood gathered together in conclave, doors are sealed, nobody's allowed in, there's a murderer on the loose, and somebody's murdered the prophet. Oh, wait a minute, that's Dan Brown's Angels and Demons, isn't it? <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, they vote for three presidents three presiding high priests, not counselors to the president who are called presidents. No, three presidents voted by the whole Melchizedek priesthood. Big difference. Nobody did it. And so what does that mean? In Mormonism, we went on on our 19 year old missions and now it's 18 19 for girls <coughs> and we uh, tell Christians that their religions don't have authority and the reason why is because we say that Jesus and the 12 died and there were no successors through that process. You see, you have uh, the uh, first one, uh, Barnabas and Matthias, I think. They had to vote as to which one of them would succeed Judas. And uh, after that, there's nothing. There is no replacement for any of them. And so we uh, go on that to uh, show that Christianity has no authority. We don't talk about the first creed of Christianity because then Mormons would understand that we're not supposed to be Christian and Jesus is not our Christ. But nonetheless, we tell other uh, 
uh, Christians that they don't have authority because of this. And so then it gets uh, debatable in the Book of Mormon if we take it literally concerning the Jews in authority because Moses took the high priesthood out <coughs> and yet there are still prophets who have Melchizedek priesthood and so what's going on did the Melchizedek priesthood come to America because literal history of the Book of Mormon right <coughs> and yet we see in the story of King Noah and who is a king and yet doesn't have Melchizedek priesthood authority to appoint his high priests you know the priests are only able to baptize that's a Ronic priesthood and that would indicate that there was no Melchizedek priesthood among them and so there's there's some authority questions that the church refuses to answer <laughs> but nonetheless now that we know that Joseph Smith set up a method for restoring the church after he's gone and it wasn't done do you now understand what happened the succession crisis is the end of the church Joseph Smith's church ceased with his death because nobody did section 107 22 and so every single branch off is their own church so this church the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints yeah, it's not Joseph's church Joseph had nothing to do with this this was all Brigham Brigham chose to start his own church and he created a new method of succession for his church <coughs> and so I, that should concern Mormons because why are we using Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon then <coughs> especially when he turned Joseph Smith into a Christian and turned our Christ into Jesus of the Christians created by Constantine and then merges it with Joseph Smith's history as literal and as a result you have Heavenly Father having incest with one of his daughters on earth to give birth to Jesus as she's a 14 year old girl yeah, the, these are disturbing things when you step back and realize Joseph's church is gone from the face of the earth and that Brigham Young had no authority no authority to succeed <coughs> and so as Brigham Young was only the president of the 12 he only had the keys of Peter James and John which was to preach that's it he preaches the gospel and they could baptize but that's as far as they could go just like King Noah apparently all they could do was baptized and his 12 could only baptize Alma for example you know I can't bat I can only baptize you I'm I can't be a seer like Abinadi or Mosiah as they eventually joined they get back to them but uh, think about it if you're serious about authority and the issue of authority <coughs> do you now understand that Brigham Young has no authority to be the president of the church he only has the keys of preaching the gospel and baptizing and so at the near the end of section 107 we have the keys of the president of the church verse 91 the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses that's the keys of the presidency and yet Nelson did his photo op at the Rome temple with who with what statue 
holding keys? Yeah. Nelson purposely has changed Joseph Smith's church, as it's already been done by Brigham, but Nelson's enforcing it upon Mormons with the imagery of Nelson holding the keys of Peter. When right here, section 107, verse 91, Moses has those keys. When did Joseph Smith get those keys? Verse 92 says that the gifts for only the president of the church is to be a seer, revelator, translator, and prophet. Brigham Young? Yeah. All his twelve are prophets, seers, and revelators, not translators. <coughs> and so when I did the video yesterday, or the other day, about how there is no revelation in Brigham's church, this is what I'm referring to, guys. He has no authority to be the president. <coughs> and thus we know him by his fruits, or lack of fruits of being a seer, revelator, translator, and prophet. We now know Brigham Young's a false prophet. He's not the correct president of the church. And so section 110, Kirtland, Ohio. Yeah, all of these yahs appear before Joseph along with Moses. You have Yahweh, who's appearing. You have El, El Yah, Elijah, who appears. Elias, which is actually Elishua, which is Jesus in the Greek. But uh, God of salvation, as you go to the book of Abraham to find out what the gospel of Abraham key is. And then Moses, 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 Moses. And they won't talk about Moses here in our church, will they? It's all about Elijah here. <clears throat> they ignore the other guys. They'll sometimes bring up Jesus. And so, yeah, verse 11. The heavens were opened. They're having a vision, guys. It didn't happen. And I'll... Numbers 12, 6, in case I forget. Moses appeared before us and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel from the four parts of the world and leading of the ten tribes of the, from the land of the north. He now had the keys of the presidency. Before that, he was just the presiding elder. He's now the president of the church. <coughs> That's the key that Joseph Smith had to lead the church. So Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. Miriam and Aaron are wanting to form a coup against Moses and uh, take over leadership. And so the Lord comes down in a pillar in a cloud and verse 6 says, Hear now my words, read my lips. If there are no, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. <laughs> the first vision, Nephi, Joseph Smith Papers corrects it, Nephi, coming to Joseph Smith, Egyptian gold plates, 22nd of September, do you remember? Uh, John the Baptist, Peter, James, and John. Dreams, visions. That's how he gets the keys. He's using numbers. That's how it's done. And so, as we all know now, as you are followers of mine on a regular basis, I don't need to remind you of the man like Moses who's going to be a Mormon from the Great and Abominable Church to restore Joseph's church. Well, he's going to have dreams where he gets the keys of the president of the church. That's how you'll know them, Mormons. Alright, <clears throat> and so 
we have all these other offices and quorums in the church all unauthorized they're all not recognized by God only the twelve but only for missionary work and baptism that's it that's as far as it goes they can't make people bishops state presidents 70 especially not president of the church patriarch nope and so uh, all of these various quorums are without authority because they didn't follow section 107 verse 22 this is the catastrophe this is not just a crisis this is a collapse and and so when you uh, get your patriarchal blessing now you understand why it's not coming to pass he had no authority <laughs> when your bishop calls you in and gets sexual with you he has no authority your stake president nothing and notice the prophets are passing the buck to the stake presidents we're not going to answer any of your questions we refer you to your stake president and he'll excommunicate you if you dare disloyal are disloyal to us refuse to pay your tithing now because of your questions <laughs> Jeremy Reynolds I'm gonna tease you you started asking questions and then it turned into so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this <laughs> that's not asking questions Jeremy but uh, yeah it was the CES letter was good in that it exposed the church but uh, it's clear ex-mormons don't understand this either <coughs> and uh, uh, now that you know the question is will YouTube allow you to watch this video <laughs> which is not likely is it or uh, will uh, you now realize that this church is not just false it's criminal you know sex trafficking now do you understand why Brigham Young was a sex trafficker it's because it wasn't from God he had no authority and so he was a criminal he was a murderer he ordered the murder of Joseph so that he could take over the church that's the branch not the other branches Brigham Joseph Smith found out it was Brigham and had prophesied prior to that Brigham's line his church would be the great and abominable church as spoken of in the Book of Mormon for the latter days and it's amazing how Joseph Smith is an actual prophet on this right down to the secret sign on the keystone of the Salt Lake Temple from Isaiah talking about Lucifer and his doctrines it's just amazing and Mormons you know they get all excited when they read 2nd Nephi chapter 3 that talks about the coming of Joseph Smith yay our church is true no it's not Joseph's is not Brigham's you're not getting it now do you understand why Brigham keeps focusing all on Joseph Smith Joseph Smith restored the church Joseph Smith saw Heavenly Father and Jesus Joseph Smith got the Book of Mormon plates Joseph this and Joseph that but they will never ever talk about succession and that is your your clue <clears throat> That you need to run because this is what they'll do to you if you're a translator <laughs> yeah I thought I was helping the church I thought I was revealing Joseph Smith was true and he is but in so doing the church is false so there you go
the succession collapse.